Max Verstappen called his Red Bull completely broken after sprint qualifying. That's not just frustration, that's telemetry-backed reality. Red Bull discovered a serious setup flaw, the RB21 couldn't handle the bumps at Interlagos, and the data confirmed violent right height variation across every lap. Verstappen, fighting for a fifth world title, was left stuck in sixth while Lando Norris cruised to pole. One more mistake like this, and the championship could slip. In this breakdown, we dive deep into what the telemetry revealed, how Verstappen managed an undrivable car, and why Brazil could redefine Red Bull's approach to the final races. Brazil never hides weaknesses. It reveals them. Interlagos is one of the few circuits on the calendar where surface grip changes by the lap, corner loads demand absolute balance, and setup windows shrink to centimeters. And when Red Bull arrived with confidence, Max Verstappen quickly realized he didn't have control not over the car, not over the rear axle, not over the very tool that had made him dominant all year. This wasn't just a misfire. It was a structural breakdown that started the moment the car touched the track. Verstappen's instincts were immediate. In the opening minutes of sprint qualifying, before the data even caught up, he called it out, the rear was unstable, grip was vanishing mid-corner, and something felt completely broken. These weren't emotional reactions, they were mechanical observations. Max wasn't confused. He was calculating. He understood from the first sector that the RB21 wasn't giving him what he needed. And unlike most drivers, he didn't hope it would get better. He adapted, instantly. Telemetry would later confirm what Verstappen already knew. The RB21 was oscillating through Interlago's critical mid-speed corners. Rear right height fluctuations were outside the acceptable window, causing floor stall and aero dropouts. The car wasn't just off-balance, it was unpredictable. On a track that punishes hesitation, Verstappen had to rewire his entire lap approach to survive. While others leaned on their setups, Verstappen leaned on pure skill. And even that wasn't enough to reach the front row. Sprint format doesn't allow second chances. There's no time to rebuild confidence, no room to experiment. Verstappen had to go flat out in a car that refused to cooperate. Red Bull had gone aggressive low rake, firm floor, tighter suspension expecting gains. But the Brazilian tarmac, freshly laid, exposed every flaw. The car skipped. It bounced. And it delivered no stability on entry or exit. Verstappen knew the weekend had shifted from attack to survival. But that's where Max Verstappen proves his greatness. He didn't complain. He didn't spiral. He adapted like a world champion. His braking zones changed. His throttle curves smooth. He eliminated the risk and extracted everything the car had left. It wasn't much, but it was enough to beat drivers in better machinery. And that's the difference when others collapse under technical pressure, Verstappen elevates. He doesn't wait for the perfect car. He makes the imperfect one work. The Brazilian Grand Prix sprint wasn't just another off weekend, it was an engineering collapse. Red Bull's RB21, usually the most stable car on the grid, was utterly lost on the bumpy surface of Interlagos. Max Verstappen went from a confident championship chaser to a frustrated survivor, calling the car completely broken over team radio. And this time, he was right. Red Bull's simulations had failed them. Their aerodynamic models, built on wind tunnel data and smooth surface circuits, didn't account for the micro-undulations in the resurfaced Brazilian track. Interlagos has always been tricky, but in 2025, the challenge turned brutal. From the very first run in FP1, Verstappen reported massive instability. But with only one hour of practice under sprint rules, the team had no time to fix the setup. Telemetry confirmed the worst. The RB21 was bouncing violently on braking zones like turn 4 and turn 12. Ride height variance exceeded safe thresholds, causing the floor to lose downforce intermittently a nightmare for a ground effect car. The car's balance shifted unpredictably between understeer and snap oversteer. For a driver like Verstappen, who builds precision lap after lap, this chaos destroyed rhythm. What made it worse was the sprint format. Verstappen couldn't afford to run safe laps and build confidence. He had to push immediately in SQ1, SQ2, and SQ3 and that pressure exposed every flaw. 
In SQ2, he nearly got eliminated. He advanced by just 0.1 seconds. His reaction? A raw, honest message, this car is completely broken. Completely undrivable. For Verstappen to say that, the issues had to be serious. The data matched his words. Rear grip loss on exits. Lateral instability under load. And most critically unpredictable corner response. The RB21 was outside its performance window. Not just off the pace. Fundamentally incompatible with the surface. That's not just a bad setup. That's a structural failure in the car's philosophy, at the worst possible moment of the season. Max Verstappen didn't just survive sprint qualifying in Brazil he engineered his own rescue. When the RB21 lost its composure, Verstappen did what only the greatest can do, he rewrote the rules of the lap in real time. He didn't overdrive. He didn't fight the car. He adjusted mentally and physically to a platform that wasn't supporting him. That's not just talent. That's championship-level intelligence behind the wheel. Telemetry showed that Verstappen began braking earlier into turn one not because of fear, but to manage the rear-end instability under deceleration. Then, in the long radius sweepers like Ferradura and Laranginha, he changed his steering input profile. Instead of trusting the downforce, he reduced the angle, effectively minimizing lateral load spikes that would have triggered floor bounce. He didn't have the arrow so he drove like he didn't need it. It wasn't just about corners. Verstappen changed his power application too. On exits like Pinharinho and Juancel, where most drivers would go full throttle immediately, he modulated holding at 70 or 80% throttle longer to stop the rear axle from stepping out. That's not instinct. That's learned behavior refined through years of racing broken cars to podiums. He was controlling the chaos at every input level. What makes this more impressive is the silence behind it. No panic. No overcorrection. Just pure calculation. Verstappen and his race engineer spoke in short bursts discussing corner balance, gear selection, ride issues. But there was no complaining. He didn't ask for sympathy. He gave data. He processed feedback. And on the next lap, he applied it. This was cockpit-level problem solving at 300 km per hour. The gap to pole was over 6 tenths. But Verstappen still landed 6th ahead of both Ferraris in mere milliseconds behind drivers with perfectly balanced setups. That's not luck. That's Verstappen's ability to extract the maximum from the minimum. No one else on that grid not even his closest rivals could have done more with that package in that moment. He turned a failure into a top 6 result. What happened in Brazil was more than just a bad sprint session. It was a wake-up call. Red Bull has spent much of 2025 believing their package was bulletproof that even on off weekends, they had the margin and driver skill to recover. But in Interlagos, that illusion cracked. Verstappen's brilliance covered the gaps, but the reality was clear, the RB21's floor concept, aero stiffness, and ride height strategy can no longer be blindly trusted. From a championship perspective, the damage was limited. Verstappen still scored points. He still remains mathematically in control of his destiny. But the margin for error has vanished. With only a few races left Las Vegas, Qatar, Abu Dhabi every session now carries weight. If Red Bull repeats the Brazil setup mistake on a low-grip street circuit like Vegas, it won't just cost them qualifying spots. It could cost them the title. Inside the garage, there's urgency. The data from Interlagos exposed a flaw in how the RB21 reacts to high-frequency surface changes something the team believed was resolved earlier in the season. Verstappen's feedback post-sprint has already sparked a change in simulation priority. Engineers are now rerunning correlation checks between CFD models and life telemetry, looking for the small variables they overlooked in Brazil. But if there's one reason Red Bull still believes in this fight, it's Verstappen himself. His ability to handle an unstable car under sprint pressure without mistakes, without drama, and still bring it home P6 shows just how strong his mental game is. He didn't attack the team. He didn't implode. He focused on solutions. That level of discipline under pressure is exactly why he's won multiple world titles. 
and why Red Bull still has the best driver on the grid. The forecast? Verstappen will bounce back. Las Vegas will offer challenges low temperatures, slippery asphalt, and a completely unknown tire window. But that's where Verstappen thrives. When things are unpredictable, he brings control. When others panic, he recalibrates. And after Brazil, you can bet Red Bull will be listening to every word he says in setup meetings. So yes, Brazil exposed a weakness. But it also reaffirmed a truth, Verstappen is still the most complete driver in Formula 1. And if Red Bull gives him even 90% of what he needs he'll do the rest. The fight is far from over. But the message is clear, underestimate Max Verstappen, and you do it at your own risk.